Hi, Melanie. Thanks for meeting with me today. Yeah. Hey, Liz. Thanks um, for coming in. We're going to talk about the lesson I observed yesterday, a house for hermit crab. Um, and you've been working on vocabulary. So we're going to reflect on the, the vocabulary instruction and how you think that impacted students. Um, but let's start with just talk to me about what were the concepts and the enduring understandings that you were really hoping students would take away from this read of A House for Hermit Crab. Well, I really wanted students, there, there's been some bullying in my class, um, and I wanted them to see some examples of ways that you can be a good friend and how to show kindness to others. That's really what I was hoping they would get from that, from that text. So what were some things you were really hoping they'd be able to talk about in connection to friendship? I wanted them to be able to tell me um, the ways that Hermit Crab um, was a good friend. I wanted them to be able to give me some examples of what he did that made him a good friend. Okay, so you really wanted to hear them talk about kind of how Hermit Crab was a good friend, but connecting back to this bigger idea of what is friendship, mm -hmm. is that right? Okay, so what are some things that you heard students say during the lesson? Um, well, when I asked them to tell me um, what were some of Herbert Crab's character traits, they were able to say things like nice and kind and sweet. Um, and but that really was about, that was about it when I asked mm -hmm. them what he did that showed kindness. Um, they really didn't have other words that they could use. Um, for ways that he showed kindness or other ex um, examples because they were able to tell me that he gave all of the sea creatures a compliment because on every page he picks up a new sea creature and he says you're so pretty or you're so colorful and um, so they were able to tell me the places where he gave compliments um, but it really was it was kind of limited and in, in what they were able to say when th in thinking about what I was hoping that they would um, walk away with about friendship. It was limited to three words, nice, kind, and sweet. So when you think about those three words then, how does that compare to what you were really hoping you would hear kids say and talk about in connection to friendship? Yeah, I wanted them to connect to like things that have been going on in the classroom and be able to say, you know, Hermit Crab was, was um, a good friend because he gave a compliment and on the playground the other day I gave a compliment. I was hoping that they would make some more connections um, to some of the things that have been happening in, in my class. Um, I really didn't really didn't see that. So what are some of your hunches as to why maybe students weren't able to get to that depth of conversation around friendship that you were hoping for? I just don't think the book had enough to offer around that. Um, it's a great book. You know, I love Eric Crawl. He's one of my favorite authors, but when I think about what I wanted them to learn, that book was just limiting. It just didn't give enough examples. It was just giving compliments was pretty much the only thing um, that they could come up with. So I just don't think, I don't think it had what I thought it was going to, I don't, it didn't have the same effect that I thought it was going to have. Okay. So you're thinking that maybe the text didn't offer enough in connection to the concepts that you were driving towards. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit too, what effect did your vocabulary instruction have on students' conversations about friendship? Well, I picked the words that I thought my students wouldn't know, um, like gently, swayed, um, and, but really those words didn't offer anything for those conversations about friendship. I mean, they were, you know, they're great words that, mm -hmm. that they might need, but they really weren't the words that were going to help my kids have those discussions about being a good friend. So the vocabulary that that text offered didn't connect necessarily to where you really wanted to drive the instruction for the day? Mm -hmm. it, it just gave a lot of examples of better, of, you know, different examples of compliments but still it was just that so mm -hmm. yeah so talk to me a little bit then about how the text selection impacted your vocabulary choice because you're saying that had an impact on those conversations right so what i wanted my kids to learn the book didn't have the language that they needed to have those conversations about friendship it just didn't that's not what it offered so I'm thinking, even though it's a great book, that 
maybe for the purpose I was hoping it would be for. That probably wasn't the best book um, with the goal that I had in mind. So it sounds like you're thinking that that text selection played a critical role mm -hmm. in your vocabulary choice and then that also connected to maybe not driving towards those enduring understandings that you wanted students to get to. Mm -hmm. So what might be something you want to think about when you're selecting text? What's the knowledge that I want them to build, that enduring understanding, um, and what vocabulary words might be, because we're, we've been working on vocabulary, really considering, and not just um, what the text has to offer, but what I choose to pull out of the text, mm -hmm. um, but really making sure that the text has what I need it to have for the goal that I have. So it sounds like you want to start by really thinking about those concepts and the ideas. Mm -hmm. What knowledge do you want students to pull from the text? Mm -hmm. Um, and that that's going to help you then pick some vocabulary that's also connected to that what knowledge. you want to have students mm -hmm. talk about. Um, we've got a new text selection protocol that actually starts there. starts with this idea of thinking about the concepts and the enduring understandings and then really digging into what is the text offer. So what are the features in this text that will support those? Um, that might be a helpful tool for you to use when you're thinking about what text you want to look at. Yeah. Um, so how do you think selecting different texts would improve your vocabulary selection? Yeah, I mean, if I'm more mindful about the text that I select and then more mindful about the vocabulary that I pull out of those texts that are, that's connected to that unit concept, like I've kind of seen that whole, it's all connected, <laughs> and, you know, versus... What I do often is I love this book and it's really cute and it's my favorite author, but it's all connected and I just need to see it as a whole package and not just this one text in isolation for this one concept, but I need to see it more holistically, I guess. And it sounds like that tool might be something that I could use as I'm going through my library and, and deciding on what, what text to, to use. So it sounds like you really want to think about choosing text in connection to the concepts mm -hmm. and making sure that those texts offer some knowledge that you can, can build for your students. How do you think that when you go to choose text and you choose text in that way, how do you think that will improve student learning? Well, we learn through what we read. I mean, just like as adults, you know, my vocabulary increases. Um, every time I read a new book, there's a, a new word that I learn or... Um, and I think about, um, I mean, that's where we get knowledge. I mean, even if as our kids get older, even when they're Googling something, they're still reading uh, to gain knowledge. So I need to make sure that I'm using text in that way because it's a real world application. We, we gain knowledge through books or through text, sometimes not, not always books, but through text. So it's definitely gonna help build my kids' knowledge, yeah. So I'm wondering if it might be helpful for me to come and plan with you using that new text selection protocol and really starting with thinking about what are the concepts and the enduring understandings that you want to drive towards in this unit. Okay. Um, do you think that might be something that would be helpful? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's a lot to think about. So anything that could help kind of me help me put that package together, um, including all of the text that I select. So yeah, that sounds great. All right, so how do you think today's conversation will help you support your students moving forward? It's just, it, I'm going to be more mindful, more mindful about um, what I want students to learn, what books I choose, and then in this case, because we've really, I've really been working on vocabulary, which vocabulary words I pull out for my students um, for instruction. So. All right. So really circling back to that text selection as a key piece, mm -hmm. and then choosing those vocabulary words that are gonna support and drive towards those enduring understanding. Yep. All right, well thank you for taking some time to talk with me today, and we'll schedule some time for me to come help you plan. Awesome, thank you for your help. All right, thanks Melanie.